makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to enjoy life. Life with Luigi, a comedy show created by Cy Howard and starring that celebrated actor, Mr. J. Carol Nash, with Alan Reed as Pasquale. You know, friends, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum is a typically American product that appeals to people of all ages and nationalities in all parts of our country. And the Wrigley people feel that Life with Luigi is a typically American radio program, a friendly, enjoyable show that sort of symbolizes the American spirit of tolerance and goodwill. So the makers of refreshing, delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Gum are glad to bring you Life with Luigi each week and have you join them in this pleasant half-hour's entertainment. And now let's read Luigi's letter as he writes about his adventures in America to his Mama Vasco in it. Dear Mama me, in America all the business is run by what we call accounting. Last week I'm a had accountant in my antique shop. He's examining my books, account my profits, add to my expense. And he's found out that if my business should become very good and I'm going to sell out everything in my store, I'm going to go broke. <laughs> but accounting has said, I'm going to change my profit system. Otherwise, my countryman Pasquale is not going to renew lease on my store and then he's going to throw me out. Mamma mia, I'm not going to argue with Pasquale because he's a mad on me. Last week, my sign is a blue over in the front of his restaurant, and it's no help his business when the customers is a read everything I hear made before 1900. <laughs> and the whole thing has made me very sad. I'm a love of my antiques. I'm going to want to change my business, but what am I can do? Mamma mia, it's a look bad. And I'm going to think I'm going to go to my night school class and ask them for advice. <laughs> Oh, I never heard a man. All right, class, let's come to attention. Mm How's -hmm. all the roll? Mr. Basco? Present. Mr. Howard? Present. Mr. Olson? Mr. Olson? Well, that's odd. This is the first time he's been absent. Well, what do you know? The quiz kit has a cold. <laughs> <laughs> and from that remark, I can discern Mr. Schultz is present, too. Oh, I, I am here, Miss Baldy. Oh, ach, Himmel, the penicillin don't care who it helps. <laughs> Sit down, Mr. Olson. What delayed you? Oh, you well, gee, Miss Spaulding, the, the vote thing was so heavy that I was. I see. Well, you're excused as long as you voted. I voted too, Miss Spaulding. It's a wonderful feeling to go into that booth and put your axe on the ballot. You well, frankly, Horowitz, I refuse to be insulted. Huh? Just because the authorities tell me to sign an axe, there's no reason to do it. What do you mean, Olson? Oh, well, maybe the other people can't write, but I can. <laughs> I never want to use the X. I signed my name all over the ballot. <laughs> the Labour Olson, he took the leg to themselves governor. <laughs> Mr. Olson, I'll explain that to you, but some other time. Now, let's get to our economics lesson for today. Mr. Horowitz, will you explain the law of supply and demand? With pleasure. The law of supply and demand is a simple question of got and ain't got. <laughs> what? Sure. When you got something, people want. When you ain't got, they also want. But more, making other people who ain't got want when they shouldn't. <laughs> you know, that's the kind of answer I like. Simple, and yet you can't understand it. <laughs> Mr. Basco, will you explain the law of supply and demand to us? All right, uh... A supply is my antiques. Well, yes, your antiques are your business, which you supply. And demand. Now, what is demand? It's another demand. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you mean? Business is a terrible. What? Well, you see, Mr. Spalding, nobody has demanded my antiques, so Pasquale, he's a refusal to sign on my lease and is a cut off of the supply. And unless I'm going to do something to supply more business, Pasquale is a demand I'm going to close my store because of the supply. <laughs> Luigi, are you for shimmers? <laughs> Mr. Schultz, I don't think that's helping Mr. Basco. Uh, but uh, maybe our economics lesson could help him out. Uh, Luigi, did you ever think of supplying some other line of goods which the people would demand? Huh? That's an excellent idea, Olson. 
I know just what would go fine with antiques, Luigi. Books and phonograph records. Yeah. Some combination. Paul Revere and Mark Twain with Spike Jones in the middle. <laughs> Mr. Schultz, please. Mr. Basco, I think you might very well consider that suggestion. I'm, I'm a think it's a very good. But where am I going to get the money for these things? From the bank, Luigi. Huh? They're always happy to lend money to a responsible businessman. Especially if it's to expand his establishment. Your oh, that's right. And, and Luigi, if you want to, we will all give you our names as references. <laughs> oh, thank you, friends. You're wonderful to me. <laughs> Luigi, my friend. <laughs> hello, Luigi. Hello, hello. Hello, Pasquale. Uh, 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 you sound like you got something out of your mind. Speak up, a little banana nose. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Pasquale, I'm coming to you with a proposal. What? What do you say? I'm a said I'm coming to you with a proposal. Luigi, no. <laughs> Happiest man in the world. Oh, wait, before you propose, I gotta call in my daughter Rosa. No, but Charlie, I'm not the guy propose for Rosa. This is for you. What, are you crazy? I've been married once. I'm not gonna get married again. <laughs> but Charlie, I'm got a business to propose. Luigi, you just marry my Rosa. That's all of the business I wanna do. <laughs> First, let me explain. You don't want to sign my list because I'm not doing any business, right? Well, the question is obvious. You keep talking. All you want is I'm sure to do business. You don't care how I'm a daughter, right? I'm a listening to just get to the trap. It's no trap, Pasquale. It's no trap. I'm a good idea to open up another business in my antique shop to bring a lot of people in. That's not only help for me, but the people that's a passerby is a help for your spaghetti palace. Oh. See, I see you're interested. Just imagine, Pasquale. I've got to just to sign up for a new business at all. A look and a listen. Look and a listen. Sure. People come in and listen to beautiful phonograph records. Stop. Stop. I think it's a wonderful idea, and I do just the business you want to open. You do? Yeah, a saloon. Uh. <laughs> oh. No, no, saloon. Sure, no. look and listen. They come in and listen to the jukey box and look on the television. <laughs> Luigi, you a genius. No, Pasquale, you all are wrong. I'm a good enough open a saloon. But I was thinking... I would do do something something fine, like like sell books and a phonograph for records. What? Where's the connection? Well, I was thinking, books and music is a food for the mind. I'm a feed of people's minds. You feed their stomachs. <laughs> and between the both of us, the whole country gets indigestion. <laughs> that that I do, and I'm not going to advance the money to put up with some high class of junk. But Pasquale. I'm going to get to the money. I'm going to the bank and I'm going to get the references from my friends. Oh, so you're scheming behind my back. The cats have been playing while the rat's away. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm no scheming. I'm just the one to help in my business. You should renew my lease. Well, if you think I'm going to... All right, Luigi, go to the bank. I even help if you need me. Oh, thank you, Pasquale. And if I'm going to get the money from the bank, are you listen to my proposal? Sure. But if they don't give you the money, you listen to my proposal. <laughs> Before we return to life with Luigi, we'd like to put in a word about delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. You know, friends, there are times every day when we all get a little hankering for something tasty to chew on. For times like that, there's nothing better than a stick of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. It tastes good. It's refreshing. You can chew on it as long as you want. And best of all, chewing a stick of Wrigley's Spearmint satisfies that little hungry feeling without filling you up or spoiling your appetite. Keep some delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Gum handy all the time. Enjoy it often. It's good and good for you. Now let's turn to page two of Luigi Basco's letter to his mother in Italy. Uh, so, Mamma Mia, I'm went to the bank for a loan. But the man, he's treated me mean. 
Soon as I'm told the manager my name, his hand is shake as I get a cold like a fish. <laughs> he's know everything about me. He's not even a look on my references. And he's a say goodbye while I'm still sitting in a chair. <laughs> First time I didn't understand how he's found out all of these things. But then I'm a suffer myself. Every banker has got a little man who's sitting in a cage. And over him is a sign that says, Tell her. That the man is a tall enemy. <laughs> so here I am sitting in my store waiting to get a turn out when in comes my classmate Schultz. Luigi, my fellow boober. Hello, Schultz. Ach, what's the matter with you, Luigi? You look like an Airedale with the air leaking out. <laughs> Schultz, everything is a go bad. Bank is refusing me the loan, Pasquale is not going to sign the lease. It looks like I'm going to have to move out. So what, Luigi? Don't cry. Smile. Maybe at time you tried something else anyway. Uh, tell me this. What did you do in the old country? Well, uh, let me see. Once in a while, I'm used to give haircuts. Haircuts? But that's wonderful. You could be a barber. Uh, tell me, who did you give the haircuts to? Uncle Pietro's goat. <laughs> Oh, Luigi, here we don't let our beards grow so long. Yeah. Yeah. But I think you got it a good idea. Yeah, you're going to learn to be a barber. Learn? Who's going to learn to me? Himmel, what grammar, Luigi? It's who's going to learn I. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, anyway, you, you, you're going to go to barber college. Yeah. I'm going to lend you the money for the lessons, and when you open up your own shop, you can pay me back in haircuts. That sounds good. <laughs> Barbers, they make a good money. Oh, sure, there's plenty of profit. And it all comes off the top. Don't <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 smile, Luigi. Tell Pasquale he can keep it, please. You're independent. Oh, Luigi, I got a feeling you're going to make a wonderful barber. I oh, sure, so you're making me feel so good. How am I can ever thank you? Ach, don't thank me, Luigi. Just let me see one thing. What's that, then? A smile. Come on. Ha ha. Smile. Be like me. Always happy. Always laughing. <laughs> My rheumatism is killing me. Well, Mr. Basco, there's no reason why you couldn't become an excellent barber with training in my college. But in order to have your own shop, you'll at least have to pass a state board examination and pass all three parts, written, oral, and practical. Now, if you pass everything, then you're a barber. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm in a terrible trouble. Trouble? Why? I've been a shaver of myself for over 20 years without a license. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Mr. Basco, now let's begin your first lesson. I saw you operate the clippers, and you seem to handle them well, but... A very important thing about being a barber is how you handle the customers. How? Am I handling him? Well, certainly. You mean I'm also giving him a massage? <laughs> no, no, no. It's a, it's a matter of business. See, a man walks up to your chair, you give him a nice smile, and you say, Good morning, sir. Well, if it's a night time. <laughs> well, then you say, Good night, sir. My mummy, a customers are going to walk out before he's even come in. <laughs> oh, Mr. Basco, please, I meant to say good evening. Now. After you get the hair cloth around his neck, you say, Nice weather we're having. Nice weather we're having. <laughs> yes, indeedy, deedy. Yes, deedy, deedy. <laughs> Would you like your hair cut long, short, or medium? Huh? Would you like your hair cut long, short, or medium? I think I'm going to take a short, but not too much short for the basket. <laughs> no, Mr. Basco, you ask these things. Oh. Now, come on, try it. All right, uh, all right. Uh, Good morning, sir. If it's no night time, a nice weather we're having, would you like your hair cut along the short? Yes, it did, it did. <laughs> oh, well. You'll learn soon enough. Oh, you, you really think so? Sure. Good. What other Pasquale? He's going to die when he sees how smart I'm going to become. Smart? Uh, sure. You know, one day, I'm a skip from a trippy night to school to Barber College. <laughs> And Pasquale, I tell you, the whole neighborhood's been going down there to give Luigi a show. Yes, that's what everybody's told of me. 
Luigi, the Italian antique dealer, is becoming a Yankee clipper. <laughs> Where's my Rosa? I sent her down there two hours ago. Isn't that her coming in? Oh, yes, yes. Hello, Papa. <laughs> well, Rosa, what's happening? Papa, it's amazing. I went into the barber college and sat down in the chair. Luigi was wearing a white coat. Yes, you could have thought he was a doctor, only he didn't say stick out your tongue. <laughs> Please, don't give me no observatories. Just tell me what's happened. Papa, you'll never guess. He gave me a real haircut. What do you expect? To get a toupee? <laughs> How do you like it, Papa? <laughs> Ross, it's a look like a toupee. <laughs> Shut up, you face. <laughs> what are you so happy about? Once a Luigi learns to make a living without his antique shop, he don't need us. And you know what that means. Luigi wouldn't marry us? Uh-huh. Oh! oh! stop, stop. I got an idea. I think I'm going to get down there and get him into trouble with my haircut. I make such a complaint, he's going to be barred from every shop in the country. <laughs> I'm going to fix that little pup squeak. <laughs> Figure, 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 yes, sir. Figure, 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 fool. Thank you, sir. And how you like your haircut, sir? It looks okay. Yes, sir. Did it, did it. Look in the mirror for yourself. I'm aiming to please, sir. Uh, fine, fine. Yeah, here, this is for you. Oh, thank you. Wait a minute. I'm going to brush you off. All right, the next. Oh, wait, Mr. I'm almost forgot something. Forgot what? I'm supposed to tell you about the weather report. <laughs> it's a nice weather we're having, huh? Goodbye. Goodbye. Next. <laughs> Luigi. You deserve a lot of credit. You act like a first class businessman. Sure, and you are a good barber, Luigi. Oh, that shave you gave me was perfect. You have a touch that is soft and gentle. Not your key. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, Arsene. Luigi, the truth. You like this work? Hello, it's the truth. No. <laughs> I thought so. Still dreaming of the antique shop, huh? Yes, yeah, sure. You have a Luigi, that's life. Sometimes they go to the... Luigi! Oh, 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 oh. Hey, hey, hello, Schultz. Oh, oh. Hey, what's the matter? You've been learning? See, yeah, sure. Who oh, listen to me? The way my heart is racing now, it could wind up as a speeding ticket. <laughs> <laughs> Lu Luigi, Luigi, guess what? I found out why the bank turned you down. It was Pasquale. Pasquale. Yeah, it was before the no. bank manager was in my delicatessen when he asked me how I could give reverences to a fellow like you when Pasquale said you was worthless. And you know the worst thing. No, what? He could prove you're worthless. <laughs> how do you like that, Pasquale? If it isn't the meanest, most rotten well, thing I ever Well, well, well. The barbershop's a quartet. Oh, <laughs> hey, you must have been talking about me. My ears are burning. Yeah. And if you heard what we just said, then all of you would be barbecued by now. <laughs> Don't be so smart, Schultz. Eh, uh, Mr. Barberman, are you open for business? Yes, yeah, sure, I'm a... I'm a man. Yes, sir, you're next. Well, well, well. Listen to what's coming out of the mouth, the little papa squeak. <laughs> Very good. Like the trim, and if you make it a good, this nickel is all yours. Very good, sir. Yes, sir, diddy, diddy. <laughs> Luigi. Huh? Luigi. Huh? Uh huh? Hey, what's going on? Then I think it's a nice weather we're having a Saturday, don't you think? <laughs> Listen to that. Nice weather we have with the yes, a diddy, diddy. <laughs> I bet when they let this greenhorn in, the Statue of Liberty began to swim in the back to France. <laughs> Clippers, sir? Yes, the clippers, sir. <laughs> hey, not too close. I said a light trim. Pasquale, it so happens I'm got a little lease right to here that I'm going to want you to sign. Stop, Luigi, you acting ridiculous. I am? Hey, I told you, take it easy with those clippers. <laughs> I better get out of here. Yes. Hey, Olsen, stop holding me. Who's the guy my legs are down? If you don't mind, sir, I'm giving you all a shine, sir. <laughs> Wait, I'm getting my hands off. I... Oh, my hands. And I'm the manicurist. Pasquale, sign of this lease. Absolutely not. All right, you asked for it. Every time I'm going to give a zip for Pasquale, I have to take a one inch of hair off of your head. What? <laughs> what do you say? You're going to sign this lease? 
Baldy? <laughs> what, what, what are you? You, Luigi, speak up quick, melon hat. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Here, give me the lease. I, I sign. Uh, good. Now I'm a safer for the next uh, three years. As long as I'm saving my hair. Not so quick, Samson. What? Yeah, we owe you something for that bank loan deal. Hand me those clippers, Horowitz. Yes, no. You hold them, old man. No, sir, stop it. Let me go, old sir. Oh. Luigi, please. Yes. Do something, Luigi. Say something. Talk. Nice sweater we're having a dunny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a got to my lease signed and everything is a turn out to fine. Of course, I'm a still not in a, my antique shop yet. No, no, there's nothing wrong. But after I'm a, was a barber, I'm a still got to be something else. A waiter. That's right. Pasquale is so ashamed to serve his customers with a bald head. After for the next two weeks, I'm a taking a care of his place. <laughs> And right now, I'm waiting on the three very important barbers in the neighborhood. That's the Schultz, Horowitz, and Olsen. <laughs> and the one thing I'm never learned in a barbershop or college is how to add. So even though they've been eating and drinking all the night, I'm a can't figure their bill to be more than a nickel. <laughs> That's just the size of a Pasquale's tip to me. <laughs> yes, diddy, diddy. <laughs> You're loving a son, Luigi Vasco, and an immigrant. Folks, the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum hope you've enjoyed tonight's episode of Life with Luigi. And they want to remind you that Wrigley's Spearmint Gum is an ideal treat for your whole family to enjoy. It's so healthful and wholesome, you can even give it to tiny children with perfect confidence. And you can pass it around often to everyone in your house because it costs so little. So next time you do your shopping, be sure to include Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum on your shopping list. Always have a few packages handy as a treat for yourself and your family and for other folks who might drop in. The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to listen next week at this time when Luigi Basco writes another letter to his Mama Basco in Italy. Life with Luigi is a Cy Howard production and is directed by Mr. Howard. Mac Benoff writes the script with Lou Derman. J. Carol Ash is starred as Luigi Basco with Alan Reed as Pasquale, Hans Conrad as Schultz, Jody Gilbert as Rosa, Mary Ship as Miss Balding, Joe Forte as Horowitz, and Ken Peters as Olsen. Music is under the direction of Lud Rustin. This is Bob Stevenson speaking. When you contribute to the 1950 Red Cross Fund, you're not just giving to the Red Cross. You're giving through the Red Cross to the American people. Yes, the American Red Cross is a partnership of the people of America. Remember, all may help through the Red Cross. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> <laughs>